I want to release the grace for speed. There is a real grace for speed that can cause people to step into dimensions in a hurry. I stretch my hands at the count of three from the front to the back, the left to the right. Help them please. In the name of Jesus the Christ of God, take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Speed to your destiny. In the name of Jesus, receive the grace for speed by the power of the Holy Ghost. I declare that you will run and overtake the chariots of Ahab down to Jesreel. Speed in business. You are in ministry here. Receive speed. In the name of Jesus, receive speed. Wealth, W-E-A-L-T-H. There is no dominion in poverty. I wish I'm not the one who is teaching this now, but you have to listen because it is true. Hello, Madonna. Let me show you two scary verses. I'm surprised they are in the Bible. These verses will make you respect God in an unusual way. Proverbs 22, please. We'll read verse 2 and then we'll read verse 7. Remember that all scripture is inspired of the Holy Ghost. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction in righteousness that the man of God may be mature. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 2. If you're a Christian, please read with me. One to read. The rich and the poor meet together. Call on. The Lord is the maker of them all. Stop there. Look at this insulting statement. Couldn't you just say human beings, inhabitants are on the earth. God is God over them. I mean, what is, the, what is responsible for this insultive stratification? The rich and the poor. He never said the rich Christian or the poor Christian. The rich anything and the poor anything meet together in the same territory like a classroom hear me it says god is the maker of them all not the maker of them so he never makes them so he made them as human beings they classified themselves into different dimensions so whether you choose to be lazarus or abraham god made you so he made you Lazarus made heaven. Abraham made heaven. The difference is the quality of their impact on earth. There is nothing that is tied to Lazarus. But God names his name. He decides to route through Abraham even for salvation to come to people. In Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29, it says, If ye be Abraham's seed, then are ye heirs according to the promise. Abraham verse 7 of the same Proverbs 22 please let's rush but you have to listen to what I'm saying now this verse oh dear this is the verse that in the name of Jesus Christ may your eyes be open to understand what it says this is not just about prosperity this is a, this is this is warfare right there it's not about money read with me please one to read the rich rule it over the poor uh -huh. and the borrower is servant to the lender hold on that means there are two ways to make you a slave and a servant two ways if i want you to be a slave i make you poor and if i want you to be a servant listen carefully i make you a borrower You don't subjugate people by subjugating them. You manipulate the economy around them and they fall into servitude. The Bible says the rich will rule over the poor. That means the rich unbeliever will rule over the poor prayer warrior. Are we together now? The rich will rule over the poor and the borrower. If you decide to replace poor, and put your name or your family and your nation it still holds true the rich 
so it's not just about prosperity and cars and houses it's a battle for influence it's a battle for the lordship of christ it's a battle for your soul i told you the ultimate commodity for exchange in this kingdom is your soul not just your money not just your products and services satan wants your soul and he can use everything to get your soul what shall it profit a man here jesus the businessman speaking if he gains the whole world and loses his soul so transaction can be done with the soul you can gain and you can lose and the commodity is your soul are we together the next verse please ecclesiastes chapter 9 very interesting story that blessed me three verses we'll start from verse 13 ecclesiastes chapter 9 please this wisdom have i also seen under the sun and it seemed great unto me what is the wisdom one two please let's read together there was a little city uh-huh and few men within it and there came a great king against it and beside it and built great bulwarks against it next verse now now there was found in it a poor wise man stop this is a story the bible is giving us what a paradox that the man is poor and yet wise poverty and wisdom does not go hand in hand but here is a situation we have a man who is poor and wise and the bible says he by his wisdom did what delivered the city yet no man remembered that same poor man next verse then said i we're still reading wisdom is better than strength uh-huh nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard so the bible says it is not enough to have a message you must have the resources to cause that message to be heard that a, a man's wisdom delivered a city yet the influence to preserve the honor that came with listen listen let me tell you this i hope you know prosperity played a role in salvation that jesus is hanging on that tree sir and no prayer warrior could bring that dead body from the cross no angel could bring the dead body of the living christ on the cross it took a man of influence and prosperity called joseph of arimathea he used his influence and spoke to the king and offered his virgin tomb and jesus was buried it took prosperity and influence for salvation to come if you look at prosperity just as some money mongering agenda of some lost driven christians here and there i know there are people that approach it that way and that is incorrect you see that but this is a battle for your soul it's a battle for our children and our children's children is the battle for the continuity of god's program within a territory it doesn't matter what our message is let me tell you the gospel is heavy it takes wealth as the ark bearers to lift it you must understand this there are certain levels of economic empowerment if you do not have you will never hear certain instructions from god god searches around egypt he wants to save his people from a famine that is coming and checks every jew and nobody even jacob is qualified to see that dream so he goes to a man of influence called pharaoh and gives pharaoh the dream because only pharaoh had what it would take to make the dream come to pass there are certain levels of influence and prosperity if you do not have it's a waste for god to reveal certain things he can't tell you to build the school because it's number one you will not believe it and number two you will let other children die because of poverty so he will revelations will keep moving around abel kuta looking for men who both love god and have the empowerment it will pass your house you love god you have qualified but you failed the test because you've ignored the place of finance hallelujah 
i will never pastor a people who love god and are mediocres i have seen the disaster that mediocrity brings it will make you compromise on your values because whoever feeds you guides your convictions you only have a choice when you detach yourself from the influence of pharaoh if you are in egypt you must serve the god of pharaoh was it not hunger that took god's people to egypt what else took them to egypt it was hunger so when satan wants you to go to egypt he doesn't say go to egypt he will cause that there is no bread and then hunger will take even a covenant family to egypt hunger will take a man of god who started well to egypt hunger will take a man of integrity to egypt hunger will take a politician who vowed that he will stand for truth to egypt it's not about prosperity it's about your soul let me tell you how you know is satan prospering you you prosper but not even as your soul prospers two of them cannot go hand in hand satan will never allow your soul and your pockets to prosper it's impossible but when god comes he will cause both your pocket and your soul so he says you prosper even as your soul that the more i prosper the more i know god and the more that money means nothing to me that it does not sustain the ability to take the place of god in my life you are frustrated satan if you have both money and passion for god you have destroyed satan